Anyways, now we can go to. Do I have to say it really? Father of all? <laughs> foam? Yeah. yeah. Foam? Mm. Mm-hmm. Kyle, foam. <laughs> so, uh, my opinion on this album has kind of changed over time. I will okay. say that. Um, I think it's an absolute travesty that we waited four years for a 26 minute album. I would be honest with that. They could have at least thrown in one or two more songs. I am in the minority that actually really likes the album cover. I love dumb, goofy things like that. And I love that they're mocking people that say, like, oh, we want you to make American Idiot again. I think that's hysterical <laughs> that they put a unicorn vomiting a rainbow on top of the American Idiot cover with what looks like Green Day written in ketchup. I yeah. love that. It's crazy. Um, but now when we talk about the actual music of it, it's a huge step back from Revolution Radio. It, it very much, to me, sounds like a midlife crisis album where he, he wanted to like feel young again and have a party album. Even like the... The release press even, was crazy too. Yeah. Yeah, like every video had like a weird uh, on YouTube had a weird paragraph after like in the description that never made sense. They were like, "This is uncut pure rock. This is what we love." I'm like, "What are you guys talking about?" It didn't make sense. And then they put out like billboards that were like, "No Swedish producers, uncut pure rock with like cocaine lines underlining it." Oh my god! And I was like, "You guys are like, I was like, you're old at this point." Like Revolution Radio, the lyrics were so retrospective and like mature. And then this album came out, and it was just like, "What? Like, what's going on? What's going on?" You're gonna think I'm crazy, but on September of 2021, summer September. I saved that Facebook, but when they first released Did the you? press release, I say, I want to read this out loud for all of you to understand what the hell they're talking about. Hold on a sec. <laughs> you really just did not give a shit. This record is the new soul Motown glam mania, uh, maniac, anthemic punks, yep. freaks and punishers. Wait, hold on. It gets better. The dirty messy. And I have the font of it. It's written into the stink. The lyrics are about the, 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 the lyrics are like a party and lifestyle not giving a fuck the life and death of the party not political surviving chaos the real shit me mike and trey of green day cut through the bullshit that's how it's always been for us everything else is freak frauds i tell you rock has lost its balls we're gonna teabag all these motherfuckers the baddest rock band on the planet gives a shit glorious or glorious anarchy <laughs> seems to be the word that could that, that keeps coming up there reflects dancing, tribalism, anxiety, joy, violence, drugs, booze, dangerous songs for dangerous kids. Our motto, nothing says fuck you like a unicorn. Love and kisses, Billy. The new release, Father of All, coming February 7th. So None of that I'm literally say none that. of that describes what the album sounds like. No, and not at all. Two, I found the billboard I was talking about that they put out to promote this. Oh my god. Um, keep in mind each one of these is underlined. Each statement here is underlined in a line of cocaine. It says no features, no Swedish songwriters, no trap beats, 100 percent pure uncut rock. Oh my god. That's so corny. It's so corny and not like Green Day at all. I also don't care too much for the production on this. It's definitely a step up from the trilogy. That's like, that's for sure. Yeah. But it's it's like a garage rock album. Very reminiscent. A lot of the songs of like an old 50s sound, like a modernized take on like some 50s sounds, which it's cool. Some of the songs are cool. But as as a whole album, it's 26 minutes long. Yeah, it leaves so point. much to be desired. By the time you get to the end of it, you're like, "Oh, that that was it." That that's my commute to work. Yeah, yeah. I that's remember the I time I was doing an internship somewhere, and it, the album was over, and I got like two more songs in. By the time I got there, because it was like a half hour ride, so it, big 
big letdown in terms of time. And also the first three songs released in order of release was Father of All, Fire Ready, Aim, and Oh Yeah. So we already knew the first three songs of the album before it came out. Yeah. And then, and then the day of release, Meet Me on the Roof comes out. <clears throat> now, I will say, I really enjoy these songs, though. Yeah. I don't like Junkies on a High. I can't stand. Yeah. It's the third song of the only three Green Day songs I just physically do not like. And I was a teenage teenager's filler. Um, kind of sounds more like a Weezer song to me. It sounds like Green Day trying to sound like Weezer. And I like Weezer. So that's, I mean, the good songs on here are really freaking good. Like even, even Father of All, I don't even mind the falsetto that he does. I think that's a actually like top tier Green Day song. People can say what they want about it. It agree, sounds actually. great. Take the money and crawl is it, it kicks ass, man. Like take the money and crawl is incredible. Graffiti is a great way to end the album. And I think that's the sound that more people wanted from this album. Cause that was more like the revolution radio style. So meet me on the roof is fun. It Stab is. you in the heart is super fun. And sugar youth is really good too. And even, Oh yeah, is great. It's just the, this whole like weird era of the band didn't feel like green day it felt like they were just kind of like messing around and like didn't care about what they were doing or putting out maybe billy was high when he wrote that message by the way i don't know man maybe because that was a and i, I, I saved the font of it too. video each of those videos like i don't know i think they deleted them since then because i remember trying to look for it recently but when they first posted the music videos each one had a weird similar paragraph like that under it, or at least one line of just weird nonsense. It was so strange. Too. I looked at that. I was like, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> but having said all these criticisms, I actually thoroughly enjoy this album. Like Me more too. than most people. I, most people are like, Oh, father of all that album is garbage. Their worst one. And at the time I was like, I kind of agree. I would put I probably would have put dose below it to be honest but i don't know I, I still find myself going back listening to the good songs from this album i agree meet me on the roof is a staple for me personally for me take money <clears throat> crawl is like my favorite off the album i love that yeah it's good too um was what's the one um father of all though the title track is just so good it's just a bop to me mm-hmm. I, I i love it completely agree so for me, having said all that, oh no, I I got to put it in number nine. Okay, all right. I think that if there was, if the songs that were released after the album came out, like the the uh, Here Comes the Shock, Pollyanna, uh, and Holy Toledo, I think if those were on the album, and the album was a little bit longer, yeah. It might even be above Uno, to be honest. But with as it is, I, I got to put it at nine. It, it's just too short, and it leaves a lot to be desired. <clears throat> I agree. For me personally, I put it one below you at number 10. But that is me personally. I, I, as much as I do love the title track, Father of All, and you know, stuff like Fire Ready Aim is you know, really good. I just wish this thing was longer. Yeah, that's my biggest problem with it. a lot of people have a problem. And I will say, I don't necessarily disagree. The production, I think they should stay away from working with Butch Walker ever again. I agree. I forget what album we discussed one album that he had a hand in quite a few of the songs. It might have been Fall Out Boy's Mania. Yes. Um, but it, I don't care for him too much as a producer. I'm sure he's a great guy i'm sure he does have some stuff that's like good the amount of hand claps on this album i think every song on this album has hand claps somewhere in it and that drives me a little bit nuts i just want to see something really quick but yeah like he's yeah he's he's produced a lot too i just want to say he's done a lot anyways but yeah, yeah like the hand claps the hand claps and stuff yeah it's just a little too much and you, know, you can't really fully blame him for that i'm sure they wanted that 
but I think that even the songs that came out after this were even a step up. Like, uh, Here Comes the Shock. A lot of people don't like that one. I like it. It's a dumb, fun song. Exactly. Like Fire Ready Aim. Fire Ready Aim, the lyrics are horrible. Same thing with Here Comes the Shock. They're dumb, stupid lyrics. But the songs themselves are upbeat and fun. Uh, Pollyanna. I, I think that's a really great song. Um, it came over well in Hello Mega, too. Yeah. And the whole message behind it. And then same thing, Holy Toledo, which they released last October, is especially solid. So, I mean, if that's the direction they want to go, I'm fine with it. But it's just make a longer album <laughs> or don't market it as an album. Call it an EP. <laughs> Yes, father of all EPs. <laughs> so, um, is that that's their most recent album, right? Yeah. Yep, that's their most recent album. They have since then the network put out their follow up album, Money Money Twenty Twenty Part Two, which was had a couple songs from Foam that were left over. Which okay. Um, Art of a Deal with the Devil was confirmed to be a father of all song and. Degenerate is thought to be from Father of All as well. But you know, I mean, they're working on a new album now. Uh, I have high hopes for it. They're back with Rob Cavallo, it seems. So hopefully, after the next, the European leg of Hell Omega, which is this month, I believe, into July, hopefully, we'll get something new from them after. I mean, they have, they've been teasing this 1972 crap for a while, too. So Yeah, since the end of 2021. So it's been months now. I know. It's, well, I mean, they're all, all, they're all 50 years old now. They might as well. <laughs> yeah, and I'm hoping that they're done with the um, midlife crisis era. I, agree. I think that this is a weird... And by the lack of father of all songs on Hell Omega, I'm assuming that they are. I, I have a feeling that this is going to be an album that they're going to just never touch again and never talk about. Probably. Kind of like they did with the trilogy, but I, I would actually enjoy to hear what they had to say about it, like in hindsight. All I would right. like to see what, if they were ever asked about in an interview what their take on it was. But we may never know. <laughs> 